Yes, guys, we are finally made it. We are finally back again for another reaction on this year. BPTV YouTube platform. Welcome to each and every one of you guys who tune in to another vibrations. I will also be dropping another one on Mr. Lick's reaction, guys. So tune in for that vibrations as well a bit later on today. So, of course, welcome to each and every one of you guys. Don't forget to do what? Thumbs up. Hit that like button, brothers and sisters. Hit that thumbs up button. Smash that like button, brothers and sisters. I would appreciate that. When you click in the smash it, boom, bam. Brothers and sisters, of course, I'll help. That'll help in the algorithms pushing this video further and further right there then anyways guys if we last already let us get into the vibrations for today of course guys we bring you this very same sentiment of what i actually mentioned yesterday i want to read it to you guys again of course there was a new video that pretty much circulated or resurfaced i would have to see and pretty much coincides bringing things to a realistic point of view brothers and sisters and of course it is written right there of course the european union decided to come to dominica to pretty much talk about the whole situation surrounding the CBI program, the Citizenship by Investment program, and they're trying for their best to keep visa-free uh, between Dominica and, of course, some other Caribbean islands uh, linking back to the European Union and the countries that are associated with it, brothers and sisters, especially the Keskenengen area, if I pronounce it properly. Uh, forgive me if I haven't. Forgive me, brothers and sisters. Anyways, this is rather interesting one, one time, and Scared is trying to tell them, hey, but the citizens have been benefiting from it. Not true. According to this article right there on DNO, actually, guys, Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt, said that the citizens of the island have benefited more from CBI compared to any other Caribbean country. Oh, matter of fact, sorry, to any other country in the world. In the world, brothers and sisters, I myself was bringing it into a smaller category, but apparently it says... Compared to any other country in the world. Let me see if there's some play on words there. Prime Minister of, Ro uh, Prime Minister of Dominica, Rosal Skerritt, said that citizens on the island have benefited more from CBI compared. So citizens of the island have benefit, benefited more from CBI compared to any other country in the world. So that shifts it from the citizen to more on the focus of CBI. Benefited, benefited more from CBI compared to, well, that is very much interesting right there. And of course, his statement was, there is no country in the world, and I say without no or any fear of contradiction, no country in the world where the citizens have benefited more from the CBI program, he, said, he stated. There is no country in the world who can show you more visible signs of the citizenship by investment program than in Dominica. That is highly and very much debatable right there. Now, brothers and sisters, when I did a little research in a little more in depth on this, um, when it comes down to BRBPTV, I tend to go a little further than I would do for the Mr. Lick's reaction, guys. There has been a number of videos that have been circulating, but this one pretty much stood out. Now, brothers and sisters, they're talking about, when you look at what exactly has the Prime Minister done for the citizens, it's pretty much building houses, right? Building houses for the people, what else? I don't know, brothers and sisters, help me out. I'm trying my best to, to run through my, my, my memories. Housing. Talk about the citizenship benefiting that is pretty much visible to see. Housing. There's been a number of houses that have been built around Dominica, apartments that have been built around Dominica. And for some rather interesting scope, you would think that, hey, these houses have been handed over. Well, uh, this video has circulated once again, brothers and sisters, let's take a listen to it right there. So, look it. Look it. Look the proof. Now they're going to tell you about scary city houses, government house. So, pretty much scary is saying that look the proof. That is pretty much in hindsight, that is your house. Okay? Let's go back again. So, look it. Yes. Look it. Look it. We look it. Look the proof. Look the proof. The no. houses are the proof. All right, the proof. Okay. What they can tell you about scary city houses, government house. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's what they say. What does Scarrett have to say about that? What is Scarrett have? To, what is Scarrett's words? Every one of these houses that we are building under the CBA program. Specifics, brothers and sisters. Specifics. Bring it back. Every one of these houses that we are building. Under the CBA program. Every one of these, that's, did he say some? 
every one of these houses that we are building under the CBA program. So everyone, meaning all brothers and sisters, not some of these houses that we're building under the CBI program, but every single one of these houses that we are building under the CBI program. Let's go back. You all, we have cataracts in our ears, brothers and sisters. For those of you who are new to this, I don't really mean that you are cataract. Cataract is for the eyes, but you, you get, get my sentiment right there. Let's continue. Every one of these houses that we are building mm -hmm. under the CBI program uh -huh. belong to the state. Belong to the state. Every single one of them. This is why when you ask, the different pe pe people who have received houses. Can you tell me, do you have a residential title or do you have an actual title where you can say, I will pass on this house to my family members or if I want to use my house as collateral for the bank so that I can send my little ones overseas to study? Can I do this? Can you ask any one of the people who receive houses in Dominica? Any one of them, brothers and sisters, can you ask them, any one of them, is this house yours fully? Because according to the Prime Minister right there, every one of these houses that we are building under the CBA program belong to the state. Belong to the state. Period. No if, maybe, but it belongs to the state. That's it. So when Scary want to come and tell his supporters now, now they come and tell you about Scary City House, the government house. Well, Scary, you did say. Mm -hmm. Every one of these houses That's that we are building say. under the CBA program belong to the state, 100%. Oh, oh. <laughs> if you wasn't even sure, 95%. Scary is not just saying every one of these houses belong to the state. He's saying not even the piece of roof on the house that you say, okay, give it to me. No, 100%. That is absolute, brothers and sisters. An absolute right there. So it's a state asset. State asset. So when the Prime Minister is coming and say that, that, that there's no country in the world, and I say without fear, any fear of contradiction, no country in the world where the citizens have benefited more from the CBI program, that is not exactly the truth. Is it now? Because if they are benefiting, and you see on the basis of benefiting, is that they are, have the ability to stay in a house. Is that what you're referring to? Or are you saying that the citizens themselves are able to profit from the CBI itself? Because based on what you're saying right there... Every one of these houses that we are building under the CBI program belong to the state. 100? 100%. Oh, okay. So... When the benefit comes to these brothers and sisters, what exactly are the people benefiting from? Because apparently, based on what Scary is saying right there, nobody owns the houses. This, all the houses are for the, for the state. They are for the state. Every single one of these houses are owned by the state, 100%. So if they are owned by the state, 100%, which means that you don't even have 0.0001% stake in the house, then what is the basis of the benefit there? So if you're saying the people are benefiting, are you talking about the basis that they're able to stay in the houses that you are built, which they do not own? It's kind of like having an apartment without paying rent, but I guess you have to pay maintenance fees. That's from my understanding. I remember when you were saying that in Postmove. I was there when he stated it. He also mentioned that Dominica does need opposition. He stated it right in Postmove. Anyways, brothers and sisters, on the basis of of understanding the benefiting factor here i am trying my best to understand how the citizens are benefiting with your things that they cannot own or did i have it wrong can you guys help me out this is why i have you guys there you know because when i'm thinking i'm putting things out there that make sense based on what i'm reading it doesn't sometimes make any sense brothers and sisters because you come in and tell the people now they come and tell you about scary city also government house as if the house isn't exactly what he just stated that the house is, is owned by the state, 100%. So my question here is, why is he telling his citizens or his followers this thing, giving them the, 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 the impression that, hey, the houses that we give you are actually your own, when on the radio, outside of his um, 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 supporters, he's saying that the houses are owned by the state, yet still coming to tell the European Union that the citizens have benefited more 
from the CBI program than any country in the world. So isn't that a conflict to right there, brothers and sisters? Having the ability to stay in a house because they kill the economy and you are not able to build your house and therefore you have to stay in the house. Does, ah, I wish, brothers and sisters, there's something that I picked up. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. Hold on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have found it right there. And this is something rather interesting that is very or can be very much applicable to Dominica. How government apparently works, and this is not just relating to Dominica, apparently this is all over, which means that we are electing people that are working against us and pretty much going towards whoever that they are paying homage to or giving their solidarity, not solidarity, they are giving their, their full cooperation to and not necessarily to the people who are electing them to do things for them. When you look at the state of Dominica and how Dominica operates, brothers and sisters, you tend to ask yourself, who exactly is working for who? Is the government working for the people or are the people working for the government? When the government can increase their salaries, how much times? Well, it's even alleged right now that the prime minister and his wife together are collecting $22,000 a month. On top of the six, sixty to seventy thousand dollars that they are collecting for the rental accommodation for the house, interesting stuff. But brothers and sisters, this is where it gets interesting for me. I saw this and I had to pull it, right, there, brothers and sisters. How government works? Government does what? They break your leg. After they break your leg, they then sell you a wheelchair. After they sell you the wheelchair, you're using the wheelchair, not true? They taxing you on the wheelchair. And then they tax you on the wheelchair. They then regulate the wheelchair usage after breaking your leg. That gives you the freedom and the free will for you to move around. Then after they regulate the movement of the wheelchair that they give you, <laughs> they then assure you that without the government, you would not be able to go around so well. Now, brothers and sisters, let me bring this to you guys in the Dominican terms. What the government has done is mash up the economy, break your leg, mash up the economy. Then they sell you a pipe dream of betterment. Oh, guys, we're going to do these wonderful things for you, build these houses and put you in and whatnot. They kill your ability for you to focus on yourself, to do things independently of the government. Therefore, you have to be dependent on them, just like you will be dependent on the wheelchair. Then guess what? They tax in the wheelchair. <laughs> they tax in what they're doing, brothers and sisters. They're increasing all sorts of fears, all sorts of things on you after they kill the economy. They're making you feel, hey, that is the best way forward. They put you in a house, not true? All right, they give you a house, so they tax in you. Indirectly, they tax in you, brothers and sisters. They don't have to tax you for the house. They tax in you indirectly. Then they're regulating these houses. Obviously, people cannot talk because they are fearful of losing the very houses. Why? Because they cannot do anything in the economy that the government them have killed. So you're quiet and you don't want to lose your job and you don't want to lose your house and you're afraid that your little one will, if your little one, talk about the pressures that they are facing, mes amis, on the very government scholarships that have been given if they were to talk. The, their little one will lose the, the, the ability to continue or the family members if the family members talk and say hey i stress all these kind of things is going on in the very economy the government has killed you know what's gonna happen brothers and sisters people become fearful so already know what's going on they are quiet and they are suffering silently and they come into mistakes to bring reports all oh, right continue still brothers and sisters after they tax you different places increasing prices all these things on you they give you a house for you to stay and you're happy. Yes, but you don't have a proper job. All right, then. Then guess what they're doing? They then come in and tell you, the Lord gave and the Lord take off away. After he giving you house, the Lord gave and take off away. So you better be happy. If it wasn't for me giving you house, you'd be outside on the street looking like a lavabo. Not true. That is exactly what is happening in Dominica. They break your leg, destroy the economy, sell your pipe dream of making things nice. Didn't do it. 
Then they tax you. They don't tax you directly. You know, they increase prices, all these kind of things there. Then they tax in the businesses that's supposed to help you. And then these businesses or the banks or the credit unions that credit unions that's supposed to help you out, they have to put more money because the government is putting more money on them for them to be able to pay it, which is rather interesting because it's a credit union, my goodness. But of course, what do I know? Then what? They regulate your abilities with the houses. I remember the individual who was in, um, I think it's Cassie Bruce, somewhere on the southern part of Dominica Brown Sisters. They gave a brother a house. And from my understanding, they told his brother not to make him come in the house because apparently the brother doesn't support the government. That is that's one of the things that I heard, I, un I understood right there. And the brother is like a caveman. Living in a broken down kind of piece of thing where vine is taking over. And then the government comes to tell you, if it wasn't for us, what your mother and what your father could not do for you, we will do for you. Assures you that without them, you would not be able to get where you get today, which is nowhere, by the way. But the illusion of, oh, they give me house and so forth. That's how it is in Dominica. And then he coming to sell his supporters. That is what they say. They say, oh, the houses are not yours. And then coming on the radio for everybody to hear. Every one of these houses that we are building under the CBA program belong to the state. Okay. Let me 100%. continue with it. So it's a state asset. The house, that house is your house. <laughs> well, it's technically your house, you know. You get to stay in it until they tell you, well, you cannot stay in it no more. And from my understanding, I heard that certain individuals got residential titles. Residential titles is not, if that is the case, it is not you owning the house. It just says that you have the ability to reside there. You don't own it. You have the ability to reside there. Okay. All right then. And the congregation seen this. And I tell you, Scarlet say, well, the, the, the house that we gave you in Bell Bishop is government house. Where are the real titles for the houses? Have they been given? I know Siri was following up on this. And Siri see up to today. Well, when he was giving the views, he see up to now where the government promised that at a certain time they would have given the titles. Where are the titles? They are not there yet. So on what basis are we drawing that the citizens are benefiting, brothers and sisters? The ability for them to stay in a house while the government kills the economy, allowing them and forcing them to make decisions that they themselves would not normally make, but because of the economy, they have to constantly be in servitude. No? Yes or no? I, I could be wrong, brothers and sisters. You can let me know in the comment box below, which is also rather interesting. But when it comes down to transparency and good government, I also have this part of the article that, that, that flabbergized me, brothers and sisters. I don't know if that's a word, but flabbergized me, brothers and sisters. Of course, it stated, in recent times, the European Union Commission has been publicly expressing concerns over the Dominic, well, CBI program, Citizenship by Investment programs in the Caribbean. And they talk about the Caribbean, brothers and sisters, but they just want to, it's Dominica they're focusing on. It's Dominica, brothers and sisters, that they, they are focusing on. A report issued on October 18, 2023, gave for the first time a glimpse of the magnitude of these um, programs in Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Lucia. Then they focus on Dominica and brothers and sisters. It is said at the time of the report, 88,000 passports within the five countries that they mentioned have been sold by these five countries, with Dominica being the number one seller of 34,500 passports, which is four times, uh, this is the part that hit me, brother, that hit me. You know you're selling all these passports, but you're only reporting a quarter of that to the Dominican public. You're only gazetting a quarter of that, making, making public a quarter of that. European Union found the discrepancies of course, the OCCRP, those who are involved in, 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 in bringing out corruption, had no linkage to Dominica until they realized, wait a while, Dominica was a key player in corruption. They, they had no links with Dominica, and they, they did that trail, and they said, hey, you know what? Let's follow up on that segment right there. 
and they followed up and came to Dominica and they want to pretend as if, oh, no, what? we don't know nothing about that. European Union, 88,000 passports, almost half of that is Dominica. Half of 88,000 brothers and sisters is 44. So that is 10,000 shy of half. So let that just sink in, brothers and sisters. This is the part that hit me. But it's not rather interesting, brothers and sisters, when the government is talking about, you know, oh, there's no other country in the world who can show you more visible signs of the CBI, you know, in action, more than that of Dominica. Well, boom, <laughs> you know, the iron of the sea came to send kids, brothers and sisters, based on what some other individuals in my Mr. Lick's comments were saying. They said it's going to St. Thomas. It's, is it going to Dominica? So I asked the important question, brothers and sisters, why little St. Kitts, little St. Thomas, all these places are elevating in the tourism industry? What exactly are they doing to be pulling these things? Dominica is known as the nature isle of the Caribbean. The nature isle, you know, brothers and sisters. Correct me if I'm wrong. Although when, I tra when you travel, you realize Dominica is really not the nature isle of the Caribbean. Because Dominica rivers and this kind of things there so just jamaica jamaica have different types of colored rivers you know because of the limestone rocks that is under you see blue rivers you see white you see green you see black brothers and sisters you see different colors all naturally made right there brothers and sisters no people are come and paint no it's natural so when you come to nature aisle brothers and sisters you know we have nice bushes and great rainforests and mountains yes we have all these things but lose your brakes coming down Jamaican, one of Jamaican mountain. Lose your brakes and you will see to the point where they even have ramps on the side. Where if you lose your brakes and your momentum, you have to go on the side and then you go up a little hill just in case. I think they build this for trucks. I actually saw a video where a truck lost its brakes and ended up using one of these things. Not in Jamaica, but in another country. I was like, okay, well, that is what that saved the individual's lives. Lose your brakes going down one of the mountains in Jamaica and you will see what will happen to you. Anyways, back to the nature of the Caribbean, which is very interesting for people who haven't traveled and this kind of thing. And then again, we consider ourselves nature of the Caribbean and we're not preserving ourselves. We consider ourselves to be 365 rivers, yet still we have more outside waters, bottled water from foreign in Dominica than Dominica water itself. So help me understand how exactly are we the nature of the Caribbean. You see, you can hear things. Just like they say, oh, Dominica is going to be the number one climate resilient nation on planet Earth. You will tell people these things in Dominica. But will the outside people fall for it? Absolutely not. When they literally had a summit or a conference, whichever you want to call it, brothers and sisters, a summit for climate resilience. <laughs> I mean, the audacity to name the thing, that of which Dominica calls itself, and Antigua was invited. There was no mention of Dominica. Nowhere. But they will tell you that we are going to be the number one climate resilient. I mean, if you try to be the number one climate resilient nation on planet Earth, my goodness gracious, there's a summit happening and you're not getting invited. Who you think you're fooling? The outside world or the people themselves? They consider Dominican people to be very resilient. And it is true. Not on the basis of any hurricane, but the amount of blows that they're receiving from the government. That is an absolute fact. I have never seen this before. A nation, a nation that flows just like with milk and honey. Oh, milk and honey is in the soil. Agriculture, brothers and sisters. And you mean to tell me we are one of those that are doing very, very bad in agriculture. Uh, we are doing very, very bad in agriculture. Thank God for St. Martin for doing a little something with Dominica. Thank God for Antigua for at least give, getting some, some plantains to sell. Even though they're taking our plantains and making way more money. We might send a million, two million dollars of plantain for, for Antigua and they themselves in turn turning the profits to what, 20, 30 million dollars. Selling chips, plantain chips to New Zealand and Canada. That is something else. And you want to tell me that benefit of the people resides in What? The only thing I can think of is the housing that they do not own. Ay, ay, ay. And then you come in and say a number of things. And then you have send kids. The important question here is how on earth is send kids getting these ships to come? When Dominica has way more than send kids. Yes, it does. 
Dominica has way more than 10 kids, but Fabi J has some rather interesting things to say. Hopefully there are no curse words inside there. <laughs> Anyways, Fabi J is saying something rather interesting, right? Dear brothers and sisters, the biggest cruise ship in the world just launched and it is already in St. Kitts. How on earth? Why? Ah, I like that. I always like that question. Why? Because since St. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Kitts is a leading booming tourism destination in the Caribbean, unlike Dominica, that is the last of Kakarats. But I understand why it's Las Cacara, because they are literally trying to do that to Dominica. They're trying to make sure that Dominica goes down the drain to appease the people in the world, the global um, thing, brothers and sisters. They literally, it's very clear. You cannot tell me we bid with a set of money made from CBI and not one factory build. Not one factory build to utilize our products. Eh? Nothing of that sort to help the people. Are you building houses and say that the Dominican people have, have, are the, the ones that benefited the most? Really? Boy, you need to shut your mouth. Yet, anyways, let's continue right there. Let me start from the beginning. The biggest cruise ship in the world just launched and it is already in St. Kitts and Nevis. Why? Because St. Kitts is the leading booming tourism destination in the Caribbean, unlike Dominica, that is last Kakarat. Yet, still the Dominicans, the brothers and sisters, not all of them are dumb Trust me, some of them are just going with the flow because they don't know what else to do. The economy, ah, that used to give people hope. Right now, they're trying to take away money from the vendors, brothers and sisters. Man, some vendors going to sell bakes and chicken to make a little money and they have to end up paying a thousand dollars. Boy. Yet, the, the, yet still the Dominic and, and the thing that the reason why <laughs> but this is something you know if you if you don't laugh it's cry you're going to cry because it, it is is it, it is the same set of people that are going to put back the same oppressors uh, boy the same oppressors we I just feel like stopping now <laughs> let me continue brothers and sisters um yet still the dominicans will clap when dennis charles have the audacity to to to, 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 to spew utter irrevocable foolishness <laughs> brothers and sisters how can you be a minister and be that foolish how can you be a minister and be that clueless to know what is going on unless they decided hey guys let's come to a meeting and hey you have to present dominica even though dominica is not doing well you have to present dominica as if dominica is the best place to ever live so when you're doing your speeches and those kind of things they promote dominica as the best even though objective reality is telling you the complete 100 percent opposite of what dennis is saying yet dennis charles is saying yet still she will spew the audacity that comes from her foolish mouth to let them believe, Dominicans believe, that Dominica is the envy of the Caribbean. Who is envying Dominica, brothers and sisters? One of the things I circulated around Dominica, or not Do uh, Dominica, around the Caribbean and the United States, brothers and sisters, and even the UK. When I meet different people of walks of life, even Africa. <sighs> when I meet different walks, brothers and sisters... And this is why I always tell people it's good to travel and meet people and organize, not just meeting people, you know, but in certain sects and, you know, people in hierarchy positions who know certain things about Dominica. I met another billionaire in New York, brothers and sisters. He had a boxing ring thing and one of my friends knew him and we linked up and whatnot. We were talking and he says, no, he knows about Dominica. I say, what? And he says, he's very disappointed in how Dominica is going. A billionaire, we that's it. I remember I also spoke to Richard Branson and a number of his, his, his colleagues on the basis of trying to do something in Dominica. It didn't happen. <laughs> I remember speaking to a king from Africa. Well, let me, Gasa, let me continue that thing. Dennis Charles have the audacity to spew rubbish from her mouth to let them believe Dominica is the envy of the Caribbean. But she's right. The envy of leaving breakfast fed to go and... <laughs> to... Yeah, it's true. It's true, brothers and sisters. I have friends who come down to Dominica just for them to go to, 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 boy. And they give these women empty promises, making them think like they're going to bring them states. And, and it's, 
That's the envy right there. Dominica has a lot of beautiful girls, but can the girls them in Dominica be trusted with stuff what they're looking for? I actually know a girl that has a boyfriend. One of them fellas came down and she was messing with that guy. She has a boyfriend, so she thinks she's gonna get something to go state because the guy come from state. So she's going to get her green card. Ha <laughs> she's still in Dominica today. Anyways, brothers, that that I go to fun. That's not that's not Mr. Alex Reacts. That's BRBP TV. So forget I said that, brothers and sisters. But it's very interesting when you look at other car um, Caribbean island brothers and sisters. Turks and Caicos together is still smaller than Dominica. Yet still they are they have brought in a whopping 1.5 million visitors in 2023 right there it's very interesting the kind of things that we're noticing when it comes down to tourism and of course dennis charles hey tourism is our business okay uh, that slogan still happening you know Tour tourism is everybody business apparently not remember when Melly come and say oh the saudis are going to give us two million dollars to do thing and scared had to go saudi arabia to get 41 million dollars I don't know. I don't know nothing. No, bro. Anyways, this individual is made in a, making an important post right there. And he said, the past few months have... I guess he's asking a question. For the past few months, have you realized you don't see your usual Haitian, Haitian, um, Haitian agri vendor? Yeah, I've noticed this as well. They used to always be outside, you know, selling stuff. But apparently, they don't seem to be getting much sale for them to be staying there. Things are hard for them, brothers and sisters. I remember when the influx of Haitians came to Dominica. Everywhere in Picard, you look was Haitian people. You would hardly see the local people, brothers and sisters. Outside, out there was just Haitian folks. Now, I understand the Haitian folks were checking like, yo, they were promoting. Haitian folks told me this, you know, Dominica was being promoted as Little Miami in Haiti. Yes! Yes, brothers and sisters. Some of them already knew my videos. But it does decide to say there's war and those kind of things there in Haiti, so they want it to rule out. Not like, brothers and sisters, keep in mind, not all parts of Haiti is under poverty. Yeah? There are some extremely rich parts of Haiti. But of course, they wouldn't let you see these things. So certain parts of the Haiti, of Haiti, you know, there's a lot of chaos happening and, you know, unsolved mysteries, I would have to say, right there. So the Haitian agree vendors seem to be dwindling all right these people are leaving dominica at a faster rate remember when um the french islands were saying hey i'm um, dominica what's going on uh, what's going on you bringing a set of haitians into dominica and then what's going they come in they leave in dominica remember how much boats used to escape from dominica and boat turnover in sea is 21 haitians or 30 something haitians or 40 something haitians on a boat Trying to escape from Dominica. <laughs> Me, a usual customer, got a visit on Friday. Let me read this again. These people are leaving Dominica at a rate, at a faster rate. Me, a usual customer, got a visit on Friday. The vendor told me Monday, which was yesterday. I guess the yesterday was Tuesday. So Monday, which was before Tuesday. Um might be the last time that this individual will see her about four vendors i know has left dominica or have left dominica in a few months i decided to tell in creole all of all all of all you leaving <laughs> you could tell uh, this zo, 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 zo. i don't know zo, zo, ali. i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyways all of all you leaving us, the ocean told me in Creole. But I decided to tell her in Creole, all of all you leaving us, the Asian woman told me in Creole. Dot, dot, dot. I don't know what else. Well, next time I'll send me things. Send me the full thing, please. Okay, okay. Never mind. You're not seeing how the country coming. So the Haitian is telling the Dominican woman or Dominican individual, you're not seeing how the country coming. Are you blind? You living in Dominica and you're not seeing how the country coming? Hmm. Except on Friday, Saturday, when many local vendors flock to the market, Monday to Thursday looks dread. Monday to Thursday, the Haitian vendors would be outside there trying their best for them to make some funds. Now, I remember the Prime Minister was saying that a oh, hundred and something million dollars live in Dominica because of the Haitians. Live in Dominica, they're making all that money in Dominica. Hundreds of millions of dollars live in 
Dominica and the Haitians themselves trying to leave Dominica? Ah! <laughs> make it make sense for me, please, brothers and sisters. Except on Friday, Saturday, of course, that's the main days when, when markets is, is, is up. When many local vendors flock to the market, Monday to Thursday looks dread. The market emptying drip by drip. If these people are leaving, then they're really feeling it. Yes, they are feeling it. Haitians have spoken to me. Haitians have spoken to me. There are some beautiful Haitian girls when I, I used to speak to them a lot. There's one that was went to, to Rosewood and she was working all these kind of things there. And she was saying how oh, the Dominicans like to treat them as if bad. But Dominica is far worse than Haiti, that she tell me. She said the only reason why they left is because there's a war happening in her vicinity. And she wants better, so she'll try her best to go. Dominica doesn't have the kind of wars and these kind of things. That the only war I see in Dominica is the government versus the people. And the people are allowing themselves to be defeated. Boy, that is something, truly something. But they have the power to stop it. The people have the power to stop it. That's why... And I don't care how much people they tend to bring during election time for them. They want to do the corruption. They can do the corruption if they want to, brothers and sisters. But when people in Dominica voting for the same people are keeping our oppressed, coming and say we are Roman party like a fool, and listen to all kind of ridiculous booyah music, um, um, after after something is is cooked. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> in the election thing, they play in those things. There, I have to tell you how far. Dominica have fallen. The very thing that is needed for the betterment of the people, the people allowing themselves to be bamboozled. Very interesting stuff right there. Now, brothers and sisters, I know I, I talk plenty on that because I'm passionate about these things, man. But there's more. This individual is sub saying something rather interesting today. Followers, help me to make sense of this. My aunt in Dominica recently fell and fractured her hip. Fractured her hip all right no you know where your hip is oh, okay keep that in mind we decided against the eighteen thousand dollar surgery the dominica china friendship hospital recommended since she's 82 years old and we are concerned that complications may result from surgery no brothers and sisters depending on the fracture is a little thing put together with some cast oil can help brothers and sisters yes ma'am Back in the day when people break their bones, it's not surgery they used to do, no? They used to put things in place, organize, feel what they feel in, and put things together, and pass oil, and this kind of thing. So I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, not giving any recommendation. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a herbalist. I just understand certain things from a natural point of view. But let's move on, brothers and sisters. We decided against the $18,000 surgery. The Dominica China Friendship Hospital recommended since she's 82 years old. I agree with them. I agree with them, brothers and sisters. Sometimes man go inside there to do hand surgery and do making it out. Hip surgery. You think you're going to go for my grandmother? You lie. Yeah. I remember a particular fam family member had a certain thing, had a certain issue. And she says she'd rather die than go hospital. That hit me like a ton. She says she'd rather die than go hospital because she knows if she goes to the hospital, there's a huge probability that if she did the stuff, she would not survive. In the hospital. That is people. That is an elderly person. You know I'm talking about that. Elderly people know what's going on. I remember seeing a video of a lady. Uh, this one is in the United States. Of a lady. She has dementia. Brothers and sisters. And they ask the lady who is the president. And the lady don't know who is the president. And they tell her now make a guess. Make a guess. And she says she doesn't want to play that game anymore. So they tell the totally lady that it was Joe Biden. And the lady start to laugh. They start to laugh and she say, poor USA. Dominica, the lady with dementia know how bad Mr. is. She remember. Lord have mercy, but Dominicans have, don't have dementia, you know. And they seen what happened in front, there, front of them. And they still continuing to, to be their own oppressors. Interesting stuff. Anyways, they decided against the $18,000 surgery because they're not sure about the complications and what have you. Her daughter noticed today that she has this cast on her lower leg. How does this help a fractured hip? <laughs> so apparently, the doctor is Spanish, so the explanations were unclear, seeking medical advice on this one, since we are very concerned. This is also very interesting. Maybe she got a fracture when she fell. She fractured her foot too. Maybe she fell on her foot. Maybe. 
Because I don't understand how you're a doctor and somebody bring you from for, for fractured hip and you put a cast on the foot. You think it's joke. Look at there. Look at there, brothers and sisters. She has a cast on her foot. Her what? For fractured hip. Well, guys, I'm not no expert, but I don't think that makes sense. No. I don't think that makes sense. Maybe somebody on the next side probably had a fractured foot and needed the cast, and then they think, oh, is that person that needed the cast? So they put a cast on her foot. They leave the grandmother to come back, and next day they see a cast on the lady's foot when she came in for a fractured hip. What do I know, Nagasa? Anyways, brothers and sisters, we're moving along right there. I remember back in the day when this uh, young boy went missing, and of course he was found in Guadeloupe. Of course, yesterday we reported that a, a, a man went missing. And of course, I told you guys, I'm going to be looking for the other one. And of course, Dominican News Online brought this for us. Mother in search of a 13-year-old son who has been missing for nearly a week. That is the boy right there. Nearly a week he's been missing, brothers and sisters. Anyways, we are continuing right there. And boom, the same day. <laughs> so this was written at 2.44. And 10.45, maybe after I put on the video. Well, I didn't put the post. I just mentioned that our team was missing. And, you know, I had to get the information. Thank God! Missing team was found. And, of course, this was brought about at 10.45 p.m. Brothers and sisters. And, of course, as indicated, after six days of heart-wrenching uncertainty, the search for the missing 13-year-old boy, that's his name right there, has come to a positive end. Authorities located him in the Canefield area, providing a sense of relief from his or for his anxious family right there. Now, brothers and sisters, if you can read this thing right there, it seems like on January 24th we went missing. They found him on the 30th, so that was six days after. All right, brothers and sisters, he apparently left school, went to visit his grandmother in Pottersville, dropped off his bag, and you know, casually mentioned that he was going to get something to eat. Unfortunately, when he went to get that something to eat, he just disappeared right there, just like that. In an early interview with the Dominican News Online, his mother acknowledged that this was not the first time that he went missing. So this seems like that's their culture. Oh, my son go missing for a few days and he come back. All right, that's fine. Probably the little boy have wayward ways in him. Where is the daddy in the first place? I see they mentioned the mother. Where is the father? And we wonder why these things don't happen, brothers and sisters. If you look at every living statistic known to mankind when it comes down to the reign of children, the statistical advantage is where the father is part of the house or the home. Societies tell you, oh, you don't need no man and all kind of... Brothers and sisters, hey, last we, we, we must use our brain, we boy. Look at the statistical advantage and disadvantage. Every disadvantage known to mankind has been raised on single mother homes. I know it's hard to swallow, but it's true. This is why I always tell individuals, especially if I know you're a single mother, get somebody, whether it's a pastor or somebody you know that's an outstanding citizen in society, and you know this individual, because you, you can't just trust any outstanding person in society, though. You don't know what kind of madness they have in their head. All right? Get somebody, whether your uncle, maybe your own father, you know, to help that Young boy grow up with some sort of substance inside of him so he can become good productive citizens in society. Because the government doesn't care. If the government don't care, you think <laughs> you think you you everything going to be well? All right then. But apparently this is not the first time he has gone missing. However, due to the distance in the dates, maybe he has probably gone missing for a day, two days, and he came back. But when he went missing for six days, brothers and sisters. That prompted the mother to report the disappearance to the police. And of course, as a result of that, you know, the update, update came. And apparently, according to this last paragraph right there, brothers and sisters, it's indicating that the latest update from police sources confirmed that contrary to initial concerns, he was found unharmed and allegedly revealed, and allegedly revealed that he chose to stay away from the home. Where is the father? That is my only question right there. Because I think a lot of this will solve if there was a father. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, this individual that I mentioned yesterday is still missing. 
So hopefully his family does find coverage or uh, not coverage, no, um, as the word closure when it comes down to this situation. Hopefully he's found. Maybe he went to Guadeloupe, brothers and sisters. Maybe he went somewhere right there. But of course, this individual is found. It is stated that the missing individual was found by police today. <laughs> I always take a grain of salt when I hear the police find people because of the lazy understandings that we have of the police, brothers and sisters. You know, we always have to look. Not all of them, you know, guys, keep that in mind. I always have to mention not all of them in that. But it's just that there's a culture surrounding that vibes. And maybe somebody say, hey, I see that person and call the police. And then the police go and find out. About, hey, what's your name? And so forth. So I am sure that is not the police that went out and did search. Well, I'm not really sure. But I'm just saying right there. It's to the culture that is in Dominica. My, the reason why I say these things, guys, is that we need better. We need better. We need to do better when it comes to this situation right there. You can't have police with big belly. Why are you going in bush? Who are you going to look for if a big belly? Huh? By the time you take about four or five steps, you want a donut. You want to eat a bull job, I bull. Oh, you, you, huh? Because you're hungry, all your energy going, but you're tired, you want to sit down on a stone. Drink. Give me some juice, please. You don't even asking for water. Give me some juice, please. <laughs> your big belly. <laughs> anyway, brothers and sisters, what are your thoughts, man? Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more, definitely subscribe and turn on that post notification so you can get all the videos as they tend to come through. Thank God that this individual is found. Give a thumbs up for that. If the police did go out there and do some research, thank God, brothers and sisters. There's miracles that tend to take place from time to time. But hopefully this individual does get found, guys. And the different things that I spoke about, let me know your thoughts in the comment box below as well. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that like button, brothers and sisters. And of course, subscribe and turn on that post notification so you can get all, not some. You'll be notified all about, all, you'll be notified about when I drop all my videos right there and then anyways guys it's about me slicks on this here brbptv i'll see you guys in the next reaction video tune into the next year this one is a long one you know i'll see if i'm dropping the next one brothers and sisters tune in <laughs> for that of course that link will be in the first comment in the comment box below it's about me slicks once again be real be positive <laughs>